Hello, everyone. Welcome to Multiple Calls, Episode 39. I'm Scott Hewlett. Self-awareness, self-respect, and self-care are common themes throughout the content of Multiple Calls, and the guests show that each of us have a unique background, medical history, and path to wellness. All first responders may not like training, but we all like relevant information and options in our work and in our lives. Just as you can't know too much about a job that can kill you, you can't know too much about the things that could help you live a healthier and happier life. In this episode, I talked to Mervyn Ferrero, Director of Public Relations at Brothers in Arms, a veteran-owned and operated seed-to-sales CBD provider and the podcast sponsor, as well as entrepreneur, international cover model, and company partner, Elizabeth Marshall. You'll learn about the company's origin, mission and philosophy, production process, and how CBD might be beneficial for you. Mervyn and Elizabeth are knowledgeable, genuine, open, and candid. Here's our chat. Hey, Merv. Scott, good morning. How you doing, man? You all right? Another day in paradise. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. You're in Columbia right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Medellin right now. I've actually caught the land of eternal spring, so I'm here enjoying the beautiful weather and camping out until I go back to Vegas in a couple of weeks. Elizabeth, how you doing? Great. Can't complain. Too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> are you at home? <laughs> I am, yeah. I'm just north of Houston in Texas. This is an ignorant question, but how close is Houston to Austin? I'd say about three hours. Do you get over there at all? Not anymore, but uh, <laughs> I used to. <laughs> it's a great city. There's too many Californians for my taste at this point. Yeah, I think Rogan drew everybody over. Uh, you know, I actually really like him. He did a podcast with a girl that escaped from North Korea recently, and it was fantastic. Yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to that one. It's heavy. It's hard to believe that that goes on anywhere in the world in the 21st century. But I guess the cat's out of the bag with Austin being the place to be. Yeah, it reminds me of L.A. And in Texas, we're not really about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So Merv, let's kick things off by talking about Brothers in Arms and how the company came to be. Sure. I come from an engineering and design background. I was actually working for an engineering firm designing cultivation and extraction facilities for the CBD and THC space in California. That opened up a whole new realm. You know, I wasn't very familiar with you know, CBD or THC or how it was being used, legalization of it. This whole world, that was really unknown to me. I started learning more about it. And as I progressed, I started looking at more kind of an entrepreneurial world. I didn't want to be stuck working 13, 14 hours a day, stuck in a car all the time. I started learning about the medicinal benefits. I started seeing how it was impacting the whole global market. Anywhere from Canada to Israel to Zimbabwe, you had people working cultivation and extraction for CBD. So from that point on, I was like, this is very interesting. And I wanted to do something in a specific community. I wanted to help people. My brother's a veteran, my uncle, you know, all my best friends are veterans. So I saw that link right there. They've suffered from a lot of either mental or physical trauma. One of the CBD thing has something that could potentially benefit them. Fast forward, came up with the concept Brothers in Arms. We wanted to obviously have the products. We wanted to have the education, have the resources. But now, you know, we have Elizabeth on the team. You know, she's been a great asset. It's been a lot of hard work. But here we are trying to fight a good fight. <laughs> yeah, how did you guys get connected? One of my partners, Ed, I think we sent Elizabeth an Instagram DM. Hey, you have a great following. You're super American the epitome of what we're looking for that we could work with. We sent her some products. She loved them. And now she's one of our partners helping us steer the ship. When we talked earlier, you were mentioning building this up from seat to sale. So talk me through what you mean by that. So by seed to sale, I mean, having the power to controlling the genetics, what type of hemp we're growing, where it's being cultivated, where if it's organic. And then the next piece of the supply chain would be the extraction process. So the extraction is when you take the hemp and turn it into either isolate or distillate. And then from that point on, when it's the oil, then we would manufacture that into the consumer product. Currently, our farms are located in Oregon, but I'm personally working on a few different projects here in South America where we want to have the cultivation, the extraction, and then be able to import, export, and do a few different things. As of right now, we're cultivating in Oregon. Everything is USDA organic, natural, no pesticides. Uh, I think that's very important for everyone to know. And then we have GMP certified extraction facility in Oregon as well. That's where all of our extractions occur. And by GMP, it means good manufacturing practices, which is a standard used in the extraction or manufacturing world that allows people to understand, hey, they're following specific safety guidelines 
in order to make sure that the products that are being extracted are of the highest quality. And then from that point on, it goes into our other facility in Oregon as well, where they manufacture all of the products into either our salves, tinctures, or gummies. And I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but CBD is not regulated by the FDA, but the facility itself is FDA approved. So from there, it goes to our warehouse. And then from our warehouse, that's where we do all our fulfillment and distribution throughout the country. There's a lot more awareness about CBD and its benefits, but to walk me through its benefits in general, speak to specifically for veterans, first responders, the people in your family that you're connected to and yourself. Sure. So CBD is very interesting and a lot of people are now becoming aware of this whole natural, holistic approach to dealing with anxiety, stress, trauma. We're so used to, I have a headache, take this pill. I have anxiety, take this pill. The U.S. is one of the only countries in the world that allows pharmaceutical commercials. Ask your doctor if I should be taking this. I don't understand why they're telling us to go to our doctors and tell them what prescriptions we need. For me, I thought CBD being a very unique product because it not only helps a variety of disorders, but it's all natural and it's not addictive. There's no side effects. People who are using CBD for stress, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, first responders and veterans, the people that need to be in the front lines, that need to have a clear mentality, they need to make decisions on the spot. So for them to be able to consume something that's going to allow them to sleep better, it's going to allow them to have less anxiety, less stress, that's fundamental. Second, there's no overdosing. That's another huge piece of it. For example, my brother, he's 75% disabled from the Marine Corps. His knees are shot in his lower back. So he consumes the salves on a regular basis. He puts them on his knees and on his lower back to help him with the inflammation. He also has insomnia. So he takes the tinctures and he consumes them every night in order to get a full night's sleep. There's so many different uses for people who have suffered trauma and who are on the front line that I think are very beneficial. It's a common thing where everyone jokes about when those commercials are on for pharmaceuticals, how the side effects are way worse than the actual problem they're trying to fix. <laughs> it's horrendous. I might as well just live with this. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So Elizabeth, obviously you'd want to try whatever product that you're going to attach yourself to. If you're open to it, maybe just talk about how it's benefited you and why you decided to jump on board. Well, I suppose the shorter version of it is I had a rough time growing up. You know, I'm fortunate. I'm a living example of the fact that you can go through hard things in life and emerge from them victorious. But I've dealt with trauma, with addiction, with a lot of things that veterans and first responders deal with also. And my father's a Vietnam veteran, and I've been around that community my entire life. So that's really why I wanted to get involved. I had been in business before as a real estate investor and an entrepreneur, but when I got married, I took some time off because I had been working myself into the ground. And after a few years off, I wanted to get back into the business world and revive everything. But before I even met them, I started thinking, I'd really like to do something that caters to these communities. And right before I got introduced to Mervyn, I was doing some brand ambassadorship for a fitness company. And that was actually where I originally got introduced to CBD. I'd heard about it. This particular fitness company was sending me pretty nice deluxe full-size samples of their stuff, including CBD. So I had nothing to lose and started taking it. The effects of it, they were subtle, but they were dramatic. I didn't feel high. I didn't feel drugged up. I didn't feel weighed down. I felt like myself just better. I felt like everything was working in symphony. My body, my mind, my sleep patterns, everything was noticeably better regulated. So I had been taking it for a while from this other company when I got introduced to them. And I was like, you know, this is something I really want to get involved with. And I'm so glad I did. People have a lot of mental and physical things that they genuinely need some help and some medication for. But the stuff that's being put out by Big Pharma these days just causes, in my opinion, a lot more harm than good. Oxycontins and the opiates. I've been on psych medications before that the side effects outweigh the benefits. You kind of run into a conundrum in a lot of different places, and CBD really is an answer for so many things. My main thing was stabilizing my moods. I've dealt with a mild cyclical mood disorder my whole life, and CBD dramatically made things better. Taking a mood stabilizer plus this has absolutely changed my life. 
for some people, taking CBD by itself is enough for their pain. It's enough for their anxiety. It's enough for their depression. Everybody's different, but it's also a good add-on if it's not enough by itself to something that also wouldn't be enough by itself, but used in conjunction, they are enough and it keeps you from having to take something heavy, from taking more than you should. You can lower your dose, increase your dose, but you can play with it as you see fit and it's never going to do any harm. There's really no reason you shouldn't at least try it to see if it's going to help you in the realm of anxiety, depression, inflammation, pain, just all of those things. You really have nothing to lose. Everyone's medical situation is different and everyone's formula is going to be different. Was your doctor receptive to this? Did you try it without conferring with them in your area? Do you know what the general feeling from the medical community on CBD is? I would imagine it's different depending on who you talk to, like a lot of stuff is. The doctor that's treating me now that I get the mood stabilizer from is a huge fan. He treats addiction a lot, so he's careful about what he has to say about THC, but he's 100% on board with CBD. I think Elizabeth really touched base on balance, equilibrium, and regulating. All mammals have endocannabinoid systems, so CBD is definitely a great asset that's going to help bring people to that balance that they're looking for and regulating bodily functions. The realistic view when people are trying to find that homeostasis is that these things you're going to take, they're not going to eliminate stress, they're not going to eliminate problems, the fact that you're going to have to think your way through a lot of things, but at least it brings that level of intensity down to a manageable level. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think that's spot on. CBD isn't the cure. It's not the end all be all, but it is a great asset, especially if you're looking to live a healthier lifestyle. If you're partying every day, you have bad eating habits, you're not doing things that are good for your body, then by consuming CBD, you're not going to live a healthier lifestyle. It's a puzzle. You're exercising, you're eating healthier, you're surrounding yourself with better people, you're doing all these things, and then you're introducing different types of products that are going to enhance this and amplify this, then you're going to really feel that transformation. And that's something that I really like to speak on because a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you know, if I take CBD, I'm going to be healthy. No, we want to educate you on how to consume this with other routines in your life that are going to make you feel better. But it's not going to be an overnight thing. You need to consume it, you know, regularly, build it up in your system and other things to make you feel better. I'm sure there's a lot of people that decide to hinge on CBD and don't do any of these other things. They try it and they're like, oh, it doesn't work. It's like the person that eats a salad, you know, two times in a row and thinks that they're going to lose weight. (laughs) It doesn't work like that. And you wash it down with a bucket of Diet Coke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) exactly. Oh, my gosh. That's like the whole American mindset. And it's horrible to say because one of the most progressive countries. But at the same time, we take this approach of what we think is healthy. We have deceptive labeling. I was in the vegan and organic world when I was in my early 20s. I was working for a startup and I learned so much, even from the water that you're consuming, the pH levels, the alkalinity, how your body's going to absorb it to when people are saying, hey, this is organic. There's so many different things with labeling that I think people should definitely be aware of. Everything's not as pretty as it looks, especially when you're at the grocery store. Oh, it's just all natural. But what does all natural really mean? All these different marketing strategies really mean when you buy orange juice, make sure you look at the ingredients because it says all natural, but it says only 50% is juice. You know, the rest is like filler. (laughs) So it's just a crazy world, man. It must be frustrating as a business owner because you need to market because you need to inform people about your product and they know it's available, but you're jumping into this pool with everyone else that's doing it deceptively. There's so much misinformation, so it makes it harder for the people that are doing it legitimately to be trusted because it's hard for people to spend the time to delve deeply into every single product that they're going to buy and weed through all the charlatans and the snake oils to get to the people that are actually going to benefit them. Blurred lines, right? For example, the non-GMO verified project. So how that whole thing started was just a bunch of young people. They were like, hey, you know, we need to verify that things are non-GMO. And then quickly turned into, they don't actually inspect the products. They don't inspect where it's coming from. You can write whatever you want in the ingredients. And as long as it meets their requirements and you pay them X amount of money, they'll send you this verification. It goes against everything that the whole project stands for. This happens in so many industries. I was just watching that documentary on Netflix about fishing. All the agencies that are regulating the fishing and make sure that they're not catching specific animals. It turns out that they're being funded by the fishing industries. This is so backwards. All of these different large corporations are the ones that are funding the other side just so they can regulate and they can control everything. Elizabeth, have you found it in general, trying to be fit and trying to bring into your life the things that are going to benefit you overwhelming with supplements and products? 
how do you spend the time to weed through what's going to work and what's not going to? You are right, especially in the fitness sphere, that deceptive marketing and what do I use and who's telling me the truth, that is very overwhelming, especially in the beginning. Time, experience, and I think age (laughs) helps a little bit. BCAAs, for example, branched chain amino acids, it's a very common supplement that people take that lift weights and work out. I was hearing mostly from people that, yes, they work. You should take them before you work out, before after you work out, they make a big difference. But then there was this school of thought that came around for a while. Maybe it's still around. I don't know that they don't make any difference and they're a waste of money. And both sides are just as vehement about their viewpoint. You are right about messaging. It kind of makes it sticky. But I think the good thing about CBD is it's blown up the way that it has because people do know that it works. And I think the biggest message to get out to people is what to look for in CBD. It is worth investing some of yourself into it to see if it's good for you. There's things that you need to look for as far as quality is concerned. This is really about education. We need to make sure that people are educated about all these different facets of the compound because if they're not, they're not going to be able to make good decisions. Merv, obviously this is one of the examples of ways that we can educate people by having this conversation. But in general with Brothers in Arms, how are you approaching making enough information for people to dig into if they want to make a sound decision? How do you find that balance to educate people without overwhelming them? Well, Elizabeth, that's spot on. You got to really understand where things are coming from and having that quality control and quality assurance. You know, obviously I can sit here and talk to you about the endocannabinoid system and the receptors, CB1, CB2 receptors. And sure, some people might be really open to it and having that conversation, but most people just want to know, is this going to work? What's it for? Is it going to get me high? Am I going to have a dirty pee test? Is this going to help me with anxiety? And when it comes to those questions, we really want to have a lighthearted, brief approach. We don't want to make any claims, obviously. The FDA and the whole government is really trying to crack down on that, even though we all know the benefits of it. But we do want to educate people on the simple FAQs. We have a resource page on our website, videos, blog articles describing how to use the product, when to use them, the doses. And what we really recommend is making sure that everything is third-party lab tested, just ensuring that the products that you're buying have the potency and have the quality that you're expecting. A buddy of mine is, was like, hey, I just bought 400,000 gummies and I sent some of them to the lab to get tested and they came back that there was no CBD in them. A lot of people fall in that category where they're buying products and it seems legit and it doesn't do anything for them. One, because maybe it doesn't have an amount of CBD that they're claiming they do or two, it just doesn't have any CBD in it. We have a 110% money back guarantee. So try it for yourself. If it does something for you, you feel something, that's the whole goal. If you don't, we'll give you your money back, pay for the shipping, and you don't have to worry about it. We just don't want people to have that negative experience and say, oh, no, CBD sucks. No, it's not that. It's that you just didn't get the right product. The industry is so new that people aren't really aware of the extraction process and the manufacturing process. You're extracting an oil from a plant. There's three different kinds and where they come from. CBD broad spectrum, which is oil, and it's going to have other cannabinoids, terpenes, but it's going to have 0% THC. So it's going to give you more of that entourage effect. We also have CBD isolate, CBD in its purest form, which is 99.95% purity. So it's going to be in crystal form. So you're able to dilute this with other agents, make tinctures, to make gummies. And this is for inflammation, for stress, for anxiety. And then you're going to have full spectrum. It's going to have some THC in it, but it's got to be under 0.03%. So you want to keep an eye out for those things. If you're going to buy something that's full spectrum, make sure that you're aware that if you consume too much of it, you might show up dirty on a pee test. You might feel the psychoactiveness. With broad spectrum and isolate, you're not going to have those issues. And then we can get into the other cannabinoids, CBD. G, CBN, Delta-8, which is psychoactive, but it hasn't been regulated. Delta-9, which is your regular THC. You have your Delta-10, which is another variation of it, which they're still trying to figure out how to stabilize. There's always new things happening and coming about, but if you're looking for a quality product, just ensure that whatever the label says, verifying it, and that's what you're going to consume. Elizabeth, do you really think that you had the dramatic effect from introducing CBD into your health repertoire because you sort of had a lot of other things in place already? I think that that helps, but I also think it can help if you're trying to establish something for yourself. In my case, it really evened me out. I've always been a pretty high strung person. I, it's just kind of who I am. I'm real type A. I'm just always wanting to get after something. And it's a good thing, but it also kind of wears you down. It's not voluntary all the time. And CBD just dramatically calmed me down, even without a prescription drug added to it. I started it before I started seeing a doctor to get a prescription. 
And it made it to the point where I could focus on little things that needed to be focused on. So I had a good fitness routine. I had a good supplementation routine as far as vitamins and all of that other stuff already in place. But I don't think that that was crucial to CBD being so effective for me. If this is one of the things you start with, I think it can help you from the ground level if that's where you want to start it. Having to have those other pieces in place, you just have to have a little of a longer term vision and more patience for it all to come together. As a fitness person, I can absolutely say that. This goes for supplementation, it goes for working out, it goes for any sort of health undertaking. Just like you're not going to blow up from eating a few pieces of pizza on one day, you're not going to get healthy from eating a salad one day, you're not going to get healthy from going to the gym one day. All of this has to involve a long-term plan. That doesn't mean that you have to get everything right straight out of the gate. No one does. I didn't. I don't know a single person that does. It's a puzzle, just like Mervyn said. You've got to get into it with the mindset that you're going to be consistent and you're going to work at it. And you should because it's worth it. But introducing CBD, I mean, I can't imagine a routine without it at this point. My inflammation is so much better. My anxiety is so much better. My sleep is so much better. I've thought a lot about how if we did all the things we're supposed to do and took all the things we're supposed to do every single day, we'd have no time for anything else. (laughs) So we really have to narrow down the key things that we can stay consistent with, like you said, into our lives and maybe slowly over time add a few more. But trying to stay on top of all the things you're supposed to do every day is really tough. At least something like this is easy to add into your routine. It's not like I have to add another couple hours into the gym. It is. And I'll tell you, I don't imagine I'm too different from a lot of people, but in my personal case, I have an area that's all my daytime stuff and all my nighttime stuff. I take a thousand milligrams in the morning and at night. In the beginning, I just took it once a day. Now I take it twice a day, but I think that's a really good way to organize it, at least in the beginning. And in my case, there's a sports medicine doctor near me that all the bodybuilders and big athletes see, and they see him for a reason because it's great. I would imagine you can find somebody like this probably no matter where you live. He'll do a blood draw and he'll see what you're deficient in. Like I supplement with vitamin D because osteoporosis runs in my family and I need it. I take that. I take vitamin B. A lot of the stuff that I take now has been tailored to what I personally need by going and getting blood drawn and seeing where I'm deficient. That's helpful too. That's a great point. Merv, talk to me about access. I'm located in Canada. You're in Columbia right now. You're located in Vegas. Elizabeth's in Texas. How have you navigated getting access to people that want the product? As far as access, we have a distribution facility in Oregon and distribution facility in Nevada. And we're able to ship pretty much worldwide at this point. Canada's not a problem. We get into Mexico. I've shipped products to South America, to the EU. It's actually interesting because the EU now, each country is kind of taking its own approach to regulating CBD. But if anybody's in those specific regions, we do have a form that they can fill out and then we'll help figure out the guidelines to get the products to them. But for the most part, it's actually been quite simple to get products to whoever is in need of them. Is there anything either of you want to add before we wrap up? Um, I think, like we mentioned, we're doing this because we want to create something. We want to build a community. We want to build something unique. The whole vision is to take a stand against large pharmaceutical companies. I've seen it in my own personal life. So many people that I knew that I grew up with that I love go down this path, getting hooked on pharmaceutical prescription drugs and completely ruin their lives. Our larger vision is to be able to bring enough education and awareness so people have the option to medicate with something that's natural, non-addictive. Leaving this world a little bit better than we found it, finding purpose in life, doing something that you're proud of, something that you're passionate about. So I think that's part of it. And we want to make sure that anybody who's listening to this that's out there that's interested in trying the product, just pay the shipping. We'll send you a little sample package you know, with the salve, with the oil and some gummies just so you can get a feel for it. And we have special discounts for all of our first responders and veterans. So just something for everyone to be aware of. We were talking earlier before we started recording about some people get into business and they dive in on what they think is a hot market and they sell as much as they can and they bug out. The same level of care and concern isn't injected into what they're doing. 100%. I think if you want to do something, you got to do it for the long haul and you got to be passionate about it. And I get it. You know, a lot of people like, oh, this is a hot market. Let's jump in and try to make some money. But I think at the end of the day, we want to actually do something within the community. We want to touch lives. We're not just like an e-commerce brand or something like that, where it's a nameless, faceless, clicks, clicks, funnels, clicks, emails, funnels, clicks. For us, it's get to know you. We want to hear your story. It's the ripple effect. If you're able to help one person with your products, with your story, with our education, start out small and then we'll continue to build out. 
And really, that was important when you and I first talked about joining up is aligning on purpose and meaning and why we do things. That's really where everything starts. It starts with why, right? That's a good book by Simon Sinek, by the way. It starts with why. It's awesome. Simon Sinek, he's savage. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Let me know where people can find both of you. So I'm exclusively on Instagram. It's at elizabeth.a.marshll. That's where I live. I'm not on Facebook or Twitter. You have a website as well? I do. Uh, www.elizabeth-marshall.com. And find us on our website at www.bnacbd.co. Merv, what about yourself? Yeah, you guys can find us at the Brothers in Arms on Instagram. You guys can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook. We're pretty much everywhere. Just at the Brothers in Arms across the board. Drop by, drop us a note. We'll be there to answer any questions. Perfect. Super clean. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the fact that we're losing Wi-Fi in Colombia, that's probably the sign that we've got to wrap it up. So love what you do. I'm just really happy to be connected with you guys. I really love your purpose and the meaning behind everything. So I'm excited. Great. I'm glad you do a podcast. You've got a great voice. Thanks. <laughs> You've got like the smooth rock radio voice. Yeah. Face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, guys. Take care and we'll, we'll chat soon, eh? All right, guys. All right. Have a great day.